But right now, if you have your Bibles today, we want you to open up your Bibles to Matthew's, uh, the fourth chapter, Matthew's chapter number four. If you have your Bibles, I hope you do have your Bibles or your phones or however you want to do it. Open up to uh, Matthew's, the fourth chapter. And we're going to begin reading at verse number one. But before we do it, let's just go before the Lord in prayer right now in Jesus' name. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you today. Just so excited once again, God, just that you woke me up this morning. You woke up the saints. You woke my family up, oh God. We have another opportunity, another chance to be in your presence here, right here on earth. And get this thing right before it's forever too late, oh God. And we just want to say thank you. And Father, we just open up this service, oh God, giving you the glory, Father, giving you the praise. Is giving you all of the honor in the mighty name of Jesus, Father. We just say thank you right now. We lift you up right now. We magnify your name, God. We lift up your name on this morning, Father. Oh, hallelujah, Father. Just have your way. Even in the word, God, as we open up the scriptures on this morning, Father, that you will just open up every mystery to us, God. Let us uh, take attention. Let the people be paying attention today. Let them be attentive, oh God. Let their ears be open. Let their spirits be open, oh God, to your word. We bind every distraction right now father in the name of jesus christ oh god we yield our hearts we yield our minds we yield our spirits to you oh god in the name of jesus to hear what you have to say to us on this sunday morning and father we just give you all the glory we give you all the praise and the honor in the mighty in the matchless name of your son jesus christ of nazareth we pray can i just get y'all just to stand up right there in your living room and just begin to put your hands together for a few minutes uh for the lord right now come on let's Let's glorify him. Oh, hallelujah. Let's lift up the name of Jesus right now. Oh, glory to God. Oh, Lord, we magnify your name. Jesus, you alone are worthy of the glory. You're, you alone are worthy of all the praise, Father. We just want to take time out. Oh, come on. Let's lift up the name of Jesus just for a few minutes. Oh, hallelujah. We glorify you. told us to enter into your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise, Father. We want to enter into this Sunday morning service, God. We want to enter in prophecy. Properly, Father God. Oh, hallelujah. We want to give glory to your name. Oh, come on, saints, right there in your living room, where you are right now. Come on, let's get out of the religion and tradition. Oh, glory to God. Oh, come on, let's begin to lift up the name of Jesus. Oh, glory, hallelujah. We believe when we will be gathered together in your name, Lord. We believe that you are in the midst of us right now, Father. You're right there in the midst of the saints, oh God, in their homes right now. You're right there where they are, oh God. And for that, oh God, we give you the praise right now. We give you the glory. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, lift up the name of Jesus right now. Oh, come on, magnify the Lord with me. Come on, let's exalt his name together. Oh, glory to God. Come on, saints, lift him up right now. Oh, come on, begin to give him praise. Begin to give him glory. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus, we glorify you. We magnify you, Father. Oh, hallelujah, God. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. We give you all of the honor in the name of Jesus oh God oh hallelujah I wish my wife would just come on with me right now oh come on baby let's lift up the name of Jesus just for a few minutes oh glory to God we will not get comfortable we will not be complacent oh God oh God we will lift up your name we will exalt your name God we don't have to be in a traditional church building God to give you what's due your name father we're gonna lift our voices on high right here oh God in the name of Jesus father we lift up the name of Jesus we glorify the name of Jesus. Devil, you are a liar. We will lift up our Lord. We will glorify the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. We offer unto you the sacrifice of praise on this Sunday morning, oh God. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, saints, begin to get out of yourself right now. Come on, begin to walk around those living rooms in the name of Jesus. Come on, begin to clap your hands right there. Oh, come on, your living room is your sanctuary. Oh, glory to God. Come on, you want your house to be the place where God lives. And the Bible declares that he inhabits the praises of his people. Oh, God, we desire, oh, God, for you to inhabit our homes right now. In the name of Jesus, God. So we lift up holy hands, God, without fear, wrath, or doubting. And we lift up the King of kings and the Lord of lords, God. Oh, hallelujah. We join in with the angels right now. Oh, God, we cry holy. We cry holy. Holy. 
holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Oh, glory to your name. Come on, that's it right there. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, lift up the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. We glorify your name, God. We glorify your name, God. We thank you for the prayer line, oh God. On your last night, Father, even as we ended the prayer, God, we ended the prayer with a praise, God. And I could tell the way that some of the saints were praising right now on that prayer line, God. That lets me know, Father, that we got some real praisers out there, God, that know how to praise you right there in their home, God. They don't need no drums behind them to praise you, God. They don't need no keyboards or no guitars, oh God. They don't need a praise team, oh God. We got some people that's watching us right now, oh God, that know how to create their own atmosphere. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. They know how to attract your presence, God. And we give it a glory for them right now, oh God. In the name of Jesus, Father, we lift you up on this morning, God. We glorify your name, God. Oh, hallelujah, God. You said let everything that have breath praise ye the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, that's it. Come on, continue to bless him. Come on, continue to glorify him. Come on, just for a few more minutes right there where you are. Come on, begin to lift him up in the name of Jesus. We serve a living Savior. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. And he's high and he's lifted up. Oh, glory to God. And his train is filling your living room right now to those of you who get out of yourself. Oh, hallelujah. You will begin to feel the presence of God right there where you are. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, glory to God. You can create your own open heaven right there where you are. If you will just begin to get out of yourself, get past your flesh right now in the name of Jesus. Get past the place of carnality. Oh, glory to God. Come on, begin to press into the presence of God in the name of Jesus. Come on, cry loud and begin to spare not. Come on, begin to lift up your voices like a trumpet in the name of Jesus. Come on, begin to glorify him. Come on, magnify the King of Kings. Glorify the Lord of Lords because he is worthy of it all. Oh, glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, somebody lift him up right now. Come on, somebody glorify him right now. In the I don't need no praise team to glorify my King. Oh, hallelujah. I praise you because you love me enough enough to wake me up this morning. I praise you because you love me enough to give me a sound mind. I praise you because you allowed me to breathe breath again, oh God. I give you the glory right now because I got sense enough to know, God, that I am nothing without you, oh God. It's in you I live and move and have my being, oh God. So I'm going to lift up my hands right now in the name of Jesus, God. I'm going to open up my mouth. I'm going to put my hands together and I'm going to glorify the one is in control of it all. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, begin to glorify him. Come on, magnify him. That's it, first lady. Lift up the king of kings. We're filling the house right now. We're filling it with the glory of the Lord. We're creating an atmosphere that miracles can flow. We're creating an atmosphere that healing can flow. We're creating an atmosphere that deliverance can flow. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. We glorify you. We're creating an atmosphere right now now that the angel will be pleased to ascend and descend in our homes. Oh, glory to God. We created an atmosphere that would draw the King of Kings, that would draw the Lord of Lords. Oh, glory to God. We lift him up right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, glory to God. You got to know how to create your own presence. Amen. The presence of the Lord is in this house right now. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, glory to your name, God. Lift him up. Lift him up. That's it. Lift up the King of Kings. Lift up the Lord of Lords because he is worthy of the praise. He's worthy of all of the glory. He's worthy of all of the honor. Oh, hallelujah. Just magnify him. Oh, glory to God. Lift those hands right there. Right there in the presence of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, worship him right there where you are. Oh, glory to God. That's it. Talk to the Lord right now. Begin to draw not to him with your worship and your adoration unto him. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, lift those hands right now just as far as you can lift them. Oh, glory to God. And as you lift those hands as far as you can lift them, let your faith begin to rise right now through the ceiling of your home right now. Let your faith begin to reach the throne of God. Oh, glory to God. Oh, come on, adore him, magnify him. Oh, lift him up right now. Oh, the life giver, the creator of the worlds. Oh, 
oh hallelujah Jesus oh hallelujah we worship you God oh that's it right there worship him Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. We glorify your name, Father. We don't need all the, the fancy things behind us, God, to give you glory because you're worthy. We know we serve a living king. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. 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 Come on, put those hands together one more time for the Lord right there. And I can say this, amen, with, with a, a, a faith. I can say this, amen, with a confidence because just on the prayer line last night, I know some of you know how to praise God in your own homes. You don't have to be in church. Amen. I thank God for those of you that have a true relationship with God. Oh, hallelujah. You, you know how to make the best out of any situation. If you don't don't feel the presence of God. You got enough in you to, to draw on his presence because the Bible declares if we draw nigh to him, he would draw nigh unto us and us lifting up his name and giving praise to his name. That's how we draw and attract the presence of God. That's what the scripture means that he inhabits the praises of his people. When you begin to praise God, God begin to get pleased with that praise and you begin to feel the presence of God. That's why the Bible declares to put on the, the God garment of praise for the spirit of heaven. If there's a heavy spirit on you, if it's ever a spirit of depression on your life, all you got to do is begin to lift up a praise to God in the name of Jesus. And that thing will have to loose you. That yoke that's trying to be upon you will have to be destroyed. Amen. Because praise is a powerful thing. Praise right there. Praise is a type of you letting God know. No matter how I feel right now, no matter what the situation looks like, no matter the odds that's against me or God. Lord, I still will give you praise, God. My praise is an indication, oh God, that I believe that you're going to bring me out of this situation. My praise is an indication, oh God. I may have pain in my body, but I can lift you up, oh God, and the pain will have to leave me, God. Sickness and disease will have to leave my body because I believe your word that you inhabit the praises of your people, oh God. And if I lift you up, God, and you begin to inhabit, oh God, even my physical body body, oh God. How in the world can disease stay in my body? If God is the inhabiting my body, how in the world can sickness and disease dwell in the same place where the king of kings dwell? Oh, glory to God. It's time for us to take our faith in God to a whole nother level. We got to stop looking at past situations. We got to stop looking at even other people's situations What? how they experience God. And you got to go after your own experience with God. It may not have happened for him or it may not have happened for her, oh God, but that don't have nothing to do with me, oh God. And oh God, and I believe you right now for my healing, for my breakthrough, for my deliverance in the name of Jesus. You got to have a relationship for, with God for yourself, amen. You got to grab a hold to the scriptures for yourself. You got to stop looking to the left or the right or looking at how when somebody else prayed the prayer of healing, they didn't get healed. That don't have nothing to do with you, beloved. Amen. You don't know how what their relationship was with God. You don't know. Some people probably were just tired of being in the earth. Amen. Sometimes we'll be praying for people to be healed and people be praying, Lord, take me home. Amen. You never know what's on the other end of that person's mind. But God God is a healer, beloved. I'm preaching the word of God because the Bible declares in Hebrews chapter number 13 that Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever, but you got to mix the word of God with faith, beloved. You got to take the word of God and believe this thing. No matter if you don't feel the results as yet, if you don't see the result as yet, but God, I take you at your word, God, because I'm going to let you be true and I'm going to let my doctor be a liar. I'm not putting the doctors down. They're doing what God has anointed them to do. But when they can do no more, that's when the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords begin to come in. Because the Bible declares what's impossible with men is possible with God. Amen. God is into the impossible business. See, that's some of y'all problem. You've been asking God for things that you can solve. But you got to begin to ask for things that you know you can't solve. That man can't solve. That money can't solve. That medicine can't 
can't solve. We're in a situation right now. Man can't solve this thing. We need to begin to seek after God in the name of Jesus. We're living in a sad day now. Oh God, people are asleep. Amen. Not just in the world, but people in the church are sleeping. Oh, glory to God. It's a shame for us to have a prayer line. Amen. And I'm ashamed to even say the number of the people that are on the prayer line. But we are supposed to be the one to get in touch with God. We are supposed to be the salt of the earth. And it seems to me that the salt is losing its savor. But you better get your savor back. Amen. Because I'm reminded even when Jesus asked the disciples, could you not watch with me for one hour? Amen. Jesus got tired of going back and forth with them. And he just said, sleep on. And you don't want God to say that to you, beloved. Because of you just determined that you're going to be asleep. And you're going to not wake up. And you're going to determine to be lazy and complacent where you are. And you don't want to have to go after God. Get past your flesh. And the words that Jesus will say to you is sleep on. And he'll move on to somebody else. See, that's some of y'all problem. You think it's starting to end with you. But it don't, beloved. Even as the prophet said that he's the only one that haven't bowed his knee to bell. God said, not so. I got 5,000 or 7,000. I don't remember how many it was. But God said, I got men. You're not the only one, beloved. God got other people. If you don't want to pray, he'll raise up another prayer warrior. If you don't want to fast and seek his face, he'll raise another up. You better get in tune with what God is doing in the name of Jesus Christ. Some of our, it's our own fault why we're not receiving the benefits of God. It's your fault. You got the nerve to be blaming God because you haven't mixed his word with faith. God created the world. He created everything that's in the world. The very devil that's attacking your mind. He created him. There was nothing too hard for our God. But without faith, it's impossible to please him. Oh, glory to God. You better get this thing right before it's forever too late. Amen. You better like stop allowing the devil to trick your mind. Oh, glory to God. And that's what the word of God here. Man does not live by bread alone. Hey Amen. Matthew's chapter number four, verse number one. Then was Jesus led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And that's something you got to know. Everything ain't the God. Hey Amen. You know, you know, everything ain't the devil. The spirit led Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted. Just like he said, I must needs go through Samaria. Child of God, there's some things in your life that you're going to have to face. Amen. You're going to have to face some, some opposition at times. Amen. Because you'll even find here, our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. He said, then was Jesus led up of the capital S, spirit. He was led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward a hunger. And when the tempter came to him, he said, if thou be the son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Amen. You live, you live, you live through your obedience through God's word. You live according to your obedience to his word. The Savior said, man, don't live by bread alone. Bread represents the natural sustaining of this life. You don't live by money. You don't live by your job. You don't live by uh, all these things that you think that it takes for you to live, that people would rather uh, risk their, their good health, some of them are saying, than to be safe. That's not what's causing you to live. It's the word of God that's holding even everything in the earth in store right now now it's by the word of God that you live sinner it's by the word of God that you live child of God in the name of Jesus you live this morning because he commanded you to wake up oh hallelujah you got breath in your body because he allowed your body to breathe in and breathe out he's in control of it all and you better get in line and live according to his word if you desire to live amen this is the way we live we don't it's more than just natural food it's more than just going to work careers are not sustaining your life even if you're not saved, the Bible declares that the Lord Jesus Christ, how God reigns on the just as well as the unjust. He's good to you. He woke up the fool that said in his heart that there is no God. Yes, he woke up the atheist this morning. 
That's how good he is. To give the atheist another chance. Oh, hallelujah. That's the simple fact that God has woken you up. And if you have uh, the ability or the turn on this broadcast or you were led to turn, don't you dare touch that phone. Don't you dare get up and leave the presence of that TV right now. Uh, however, you're watching me. Don't you go nowhere. You stay right here because there is a word from the Lord. There is no safety, child of God. There's no safety in disobedience. Amen. Safety is in the obedience of God. That's why it's so important to know the voice of God. Why is it so important to know the voice of God? Because there is no safety in disobeying God. And, in, in order, and for you to disobey God, some of you, it's because you don't really know the voice of God. You, know, you don't know between your voice God's voice and the devil's voice. Some of you are in the trouble or the state that you're in, not because the devil, you listen to the devil's voice, but you're listening to your own voice. You're doing your own will. You're going it about your own way. You're doing it the way your mama did it. You're doing it the way your daddy did it. Amen. But you fail to get into the presence of God and seek him and stand in his counsel to see the way, how, Lord, how do you want me to do it? Amen. How even the Bible declares that we trust in the Lord with all of our heart and lean not unto our own understanding but in all our ways somebody say all out there all our ways acknowledge him everything in your life God wants you to acknowledge him the first time you get up this morning you open your eyes even before you roll from up under those covers you should be already acknowledging God oh first thing you should really do is thank him but after thanking him begin to acknowledge begin to seek him begin to ask him what were you having to do today Lord, order my steps today, oh God. Not my will, but let thy will be done. God, anybody that I'm supposed to come in contact with today, God, let me come in contact with them. Whatever I'm supposed to say, oh God, allow me to say what I'm supposed to say, oh God. Well, in order to walk in the spirit, you got to get out of your flesh. We learned about that on this past Friday night. We got to walk in the spirit so we don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. I mean, some of us can't eat fat enough to even walk in the spirit because to walk in the spirit, you got to know the voice of God. Uh-huh. You got to, to really walk in the spirit, you got to know God's voice. To know the voice of God, you got to know his word. Amen. To know the voice of God, you got to know his word. Why to know the voice of God do I need to know his word? Because you got to understand, beloved, God would never speak contrary to his word. And that's how some, see, see, that's what some of the things you're hearing, you need to go back and, 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 and examine it with the scriptures, examine it with the word of God, even some of the decisions that we're making as people of God, even this pandemic, we got to know that we're hearing the voice of God. Amen. Why do we need to know? Why is this so valuable, uh, Pastor Anton? Why are you so uh, urgent and so fervent with this message of knowing the voice of God? Because beloved, there's safety in the voice of God. You you got to know without a shadow of a doubt, especially when we're in times like we are now, when we're living in the end times, amen. Oh, glory to God. And we see the signs of the time. You got to know, number one, you got to know the voice of God. Number two, you got to know the times, amen. But here we go right now. How I'm going to know the times of God? It all goes back to the word of God. If you stay in the word of God, you will know the times of God. You will know the times that we live in. So what God is saying, beloved, you got to to get and you got to stay in the word. Biblical instruction before leaving earth. Amen. Everything uh, you need is in the word of God. It's vital in this season that you stay in the word of God. More than you on YouTube strolling to see what somebody else is going to say or seeing what the next prophet is going to say. You better get into the word of God and see what he is saying in this day and time. Oh, glory to God. Because if anybody saying they're a prophet and ain't telling the people to repent, you don't need to watch them anyway. God ain't calling for nothing right now but for the church to get it right before it's forever too late and for the sinner to repent before it's forever too late we're living in the last of the last days beloved Jesus came on the scene he said repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand Oh, glory to God. God, in the Old Testament, said, so how long will you halt between two opinions? Amen. It's always about the soul of 
man. Yes, we understand about all the other things in the, in the word of God or the gospel, but the number one thing is for the soul to be saved. And when it comes to blessing, amen, God is blessing you. Yeah, he wants you to be blessed in your home. He wants you to be able to have transportation to work, but he also wants you to be blessed so you have a covenant can be established upon the earth for this gospel can go forth, amen, for there to be no lack in his house, amen. Glory to God. That's why it's so important as leaders, as preachers, as pastors, that we handle the people's funds that they give. We handle those things properly. Oh, hallelujah, because we don't want to hinder what God wants to do even through their giving, but we mishandle, we misuse, amen, the things of God, and then that's how if we blame it, oh man, on the people, but really it comes first with the leader, because of the people see us handling things right, that they see us doing the right thing. Oh God, with the funds that's coming in, they will be happy to give, even though child of God, even though right now you think I'm giving you a way out, oh, but I'm not, because you got to remember that you're giving first to God, amen, once you obey God, rather the man of God or the woman of God do wrong with it, that's out to them, that's what's between them and God, but you obey God, but right now, amen, God is calling us all to order. From the head to the tail. Amen. To the front to the back. From the back to the front. He's calling everything to order. Verse number four again. He said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God doeth man live. And my last point was God would never speak contrary to his word. And that's why it's so important you even write this down. Second Timothy chapter 2. Uh, verse 15, it says, study to so show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You have to study in order to be, not to be ashamed. Amen. You have to study. Amen. And you, the order to be able to rightly divide this word. We got people now that's doing things, uh, uh, thinking they're doing it according to the word, but they're not, it's not what God is saying because they're not rightly dividing the word of God. You got to make sure that you're rightly dividing the word of truth. You got to study the word of God. Amen. And after study, even before you open up your Bible, it's very good to pray, to ask God, Lord, I'm about to get into your word. Number one, what do I need to read today? Amen. What should I be reading about today? Open up my understanding, Father. Help me to rightly divide it, God. If it, open up the mysteries of your word to me. Let your word be plain. Let it be understandable. You got to pray before you open up this book. Amen. Because it's so important. Because you know why it's so important? Because you'll find out if we continue to read. Let's read on. Then the devil taking him up into the holy city and set of him on the pinnacle of the temple and said from the him, if thou be the son of God, cast thyself down. For it is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee. And in their hands shall they bear thee up, lest thou dash thy foot against his stone. Jesus said unto him, it is written again, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. He was getting trying to get Jesus commit suicide. <laughs> Amen. But that's how you, you don't tempt God. You don't, okay, if God will do this, okay, I'm going to do this and, and I'm going to see if you, no, you don't tempt God. Amen. You, that's why it's so important for you to obey God and you got to know when God is doing something. Amen. You even how we can even go in the book of Exodus and we'll find out about when it, when it was the time that God said for the children of Israel to smite the, the blood over the doorpost, you know, on, on both sides on the left and on the right and on the top of the doorpost. How many know that's like the cross? Amen. God is so awesome. But amen. But and Because God said he was passing by. Amen. With the death angel. But the people that didn't have the blood on the ones that were in you. Then one you had to have the blood then you had to stay in your house. If you didn't have that blood and you weren't in your house, that thing that wasn't intended for them would have got them. Amen. That's why it's so important to know the times. It's so important to know the word and the how. And it's so important for you to be obedient after you know the word of God. Amen. This is what Jesus, the illustration here, that the devil's trying to get him. Yes, God did say that, but that's not the context that he meant. Amen. See, you got to know my point that I'm making right now. You got to know the word, but you got to also know that the enemy know the word. He know the word better than you. And not only the, 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 the thing is not 
the, uh, the thing that we're not to be afraid of him knowing the word, but he knows the word, but he knows how to twist the word. And here he tries to twist the word here with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And this is how you be effective with the enemy. You always have to come back with the word of God when the devil is attacking your mind. Amen. With negative thoughts, suicidal thoughts, whatever. I don't know who I'm speaking to right now, but that's why it's so important for you to know the word. But Jesus says here in verse number seven, Jesus said unto him, it is written again. See? Jesus didn't say, this not, that ain't written. <laughs> no, the devil came to here with the scripture, but Jesus say, but hey, okay, I understand that. See, that's how you could have. Uh, some pastor would take some scriptures right now and justify the things that they're doing. Amen. But then another pastor that's rightly divided, that studied his word. Amen. And he's he, the, the, the workman that we read about right here studied so self approved on the God, a workman, the workman that needed not be ashamed, rightly divide the word of truth. The one knows how to rightly divide it. But you say, oh, uh -uh, brother, come back. Now it's written again. Amen. It's written again. So this is what Jesus is saying. It's written again that thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Don't tempt God. Amen. Don't tempt God. Don't tempt God. Don't tempt God. Even in this time right now when God is moving. Amen. God is moving through the earth. Amen. His word is in operation. What Jesus said in Matthew chapter number 24, how in the last days going to be uh, earthquakes and diverse places and wars and rumors of war. There are also going to be pestilence and famines in the land. When God's word is being performed. Amen. You can, hey, you better get into the safe place. You got to know what God is saying at that time. Amen. Because every time God was allowing judgment whether you believe this is God or you don't believe God or not it, it does not matter it's happening in order for anything to happen it cannot happen except God allowed because he is in control of it all so if God is allowing this to happen amen amen he we have to uh, abide by safety measures I mean that don't mean that we don't have no lack of faith amen he but God said to the children of Israel when I pass by you got to have this blood on and you got to be in your house even look at Lot's wife Amen. God loved them enough because God was getting ready to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. But he sent the angel, hey, to get Lot and his family out. But the, the condition was, hey, I'm going to get y'all out of here. But once you get out, don't look back. Amen. But Lot's wife turned back. God, she was in the safety of God. She was one of the ones that God came to save. Amen. Out of that, she was in the city that Lot and his wife was in the city that God was coming to destroy. Just like right now, judgment is upon the world right now. This is pestilence and stuff. Amen. It's upon the world. We're in the midst of this world. But if God allow us to get out of that child of God, stay out. And the angel told her, don't look back. And she looked back and she turned into a pillar of salt. Amen. There's consequences. Amen. And this is what God didn't say. How you know God? Because if you've been in prayer, you will know what God is saying. I told the saints, even when this thing first started, I said, we're going to preach as long as we can. But as soon as they tell us that we can no longer gather, we are going to obey. Because number one, I'm uh, responsible for the people of God. I'm responsible for them. Amen. I got to do everything in the best interest of them. But at the same time, you know, pastor going to turn it now. But at the same time, I got to hear God enough when y'all telling me to do something. Amen. I got to know what God has told me to do because that's how. Let's go here. I'm getting ahead of myself. But let's go to uh, 1 Samuel since we're on the long, the, along the lines right now uh, uh, who to listen to. Amen. Because even though me as your shepherd, me as a pastor, I have a responsibility to cover you and protect you. You. Amen. But sometimes, hey, preachers, amen, leaders, people can get you in trouble with God. Just like uh, Saul, King Saul in 1 Samuel chapter number 15, verses 1 through 24, when God told him, uh, sent Samuel to him and told him to go and destroy, I believe it was the Amalekites, destroy everything, and even the infants and the babies. Amen. Everything. He told him to orderly destroy them. But the moral of the story is that Saul, he didn't destroy them. Number one, he saved. Uh, the king's life and then they kept all the good sheep they kept all the good oxen amen and for that right there that disobedience we finna get here and read because I, I just explained it because I can't go into all of it right now let's go turn there though first Samuel uh, chapter number 15 and we're gonna first Samuel Old Testament chapter number 15 and we're just going to skip around to some things I highlighted because we're living in this day and time. I hope he have the ear to hear what the Spirit is saying. You're listening to me right now. Amen. You're listening to me. But uh, 1 Samuel chapter number 15, verse number 1, we're going to zero in. Saul, I mean Samuel, 
also said unto Saul, the Lord sent me to anoint thee to be king over this people, over Israel. Now therefore hearken unto the voice of the words of the Lord. That's something you need to hearken to the voice of the words of the Lord, beloved. This is the word of the Lord that's coming unto you today. What does he say? He said, hearken unto the voice of the words of the Lord. Hearken, listen to me, beloved, unto the voice of the word of the Lord. It's backing up what I say. It's the season. This is a time that you cannot afford not to be in your word because also in these last days, it's going to be many false prophets that's going to rise up in this day and time. That's why you got to hearken unto the voice of the word word of the Lord. Amen. Thus saith the Lord, verse number two, thus saith the Lord of hosts. I remember that which Amalek did to Israel, how he laid wait for him in the way when he came up from Egypt. Now go and spite Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have and spare them not, but slay both man and woman, infant, Sucklings, ox, and sheep, and camel, and ass. Just stop right there. Now you see the instruction that he gave him. Let's go over to the 13th verse. Now let's just go ahead and read. Uh, let's go ahead and read on down for it to make more sense to all of y'all. Because I want you to get this. Verse number four. And Saul gathered the people together and numbered them and, tell, and telling them 200 thousand footmen and ten thousand men of Judah. And Saul came to a city of Amalek and laid wait in the valley. And Saul said unto the Kenites, go depart, get thee down from among the Amalekites, lest I destroy you with them, for ye showed kindness to all the children of Israel when they came up out of Egypt. So the Kenites departed from among the Amalekites, and Saul smote the Amalekites from Havilah unto the comets to Shur. That is over against Egypt. And he took Agad, the king of the Amalekites, alive and utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. He said, destroy everybody. You see, now we are already seeing. And Saul's and the people spared Agad and the best of the sheep and of the oxen and of the fatlings and the lambs and all that was good and would not utterly destroy them because everything that was vile and refused. But everything that was vile, but everything that was vile and refused that they destroyed utterly. They only destroyed the, the stuff they couldn't use. And God told them to destroy everything. Then came the word of the Lord unto Samuel the prophet. It repenteth me that I have set up Saul to be king. For he has turned back from following me and have not performed my commandments. And it grieved Samuel and he cried unto the Lord all night. And Samuel rose up early to meet Saul in the morning. It was told Samuel, saying, Saul came to Carmel. And behold, he set him up a place and has gone about and passed on and gone down to Gilgal. And Samuel came to Saul. And Saul said unto him, Blessed be thou of the Lord. I have performed the commandment of the Lord. He lying. Amen. You, you hear this? Are y'all reading this? Y'all following along with me? Amen. And Samuel said, what meaneth then this bleating of the sheep? Samuel, you hear the sheep in the background in my ears and lowing of the oxen, the oxen. And then Saul said, they have brought them from the Amalekites. For the people spared the best of the sheep and of the oxen to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God. And the rest we have utterly destroyed. Are you seeing the more story? Did God, did God tell them that he ain't tell, he ain't say nothing about no sacrifice? Come on, let's keep on reading. God didn't say, and I hope you're getting uh, this right here, because this is very important. Then Samuel said unto Saul, stay, and I will tell thee what the Lord has said to me this night. And he said unto him, Say on. And Samuel said, We went when thou was little in our own sight. And, and, and well, look at that now. That's, that's very important. Now, stay small. Stay humble. We've been talking about that uh, these past weeks about being humble. Amen. He said, but Samuel said, when thou was little in thy own sight, was that not made the head of the tribes of Israel? And the Lord anointed thee king over Israel? And the Lord sent thee on a journey and said, go and utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they be consumed? 
Wherefore then didst thou not obey the voice of the Lord? See that? You see he didn't obey the voice of the Lord, huh? But we see here now because it's a, some, who got in his ear? The people got in his ear. Wherefore didst thou not obey the voice of the Lord, but didst fly upon the spoil and did, did his evil in the sight of the Lord? Beloved, this is so important. I don't miss this now. When you're walking in obedience, you're doing evil to the Lord. So now you understand how it's so important to number one, you got to know the voice of the Lord. Amen. You got to know his voice. Because how could you be obedient except you know his voice? Amen. And once you start to know his voice, you better know that you better obey his voice. And no matter who says what or who thinks what, this is very good for me as a pastor because there's going to be some times that God is going to tell me to do something that the people don't agree with. It's going to be time, past, uh, pastors, it's going to be time, mothers, fathers, amen, God going to tell you to do something. Your husband or your wife or your children may not agree with that, but the Bible says to disobey the Lord is evil. This man did evil through his disobedience. God looks at disobedience as evil. Amen. Now, you see the seriousness of the word right here. He said, wherefore, verse number 19, then didst thou not obey the voice of the Lord? But this fly upon the sport and this evil in the sight of the Lord. And Saul said unto Samuel, Yea, I have, obey, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord and have gone the way which the Lord sent me and have brought Agai the king of Amalek and have brought Agai the king of Amalek and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. But the people took of the swore sheep and oxen, the chief of the things which I should have been, should have been utterly destroyed to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God and give God. Look at that. God ain't say that. What is he? What's going on here? How could he get into this place? A great and a mighty king get to the place where he start uh, allowing the people become become in between him and his relationship with God. I got to be careful. God preaching to me right now. Amen. I can't allow people, I can't even allow the saints of the World Harvest Center ministry to get in, in, in there between me and my relationship with God. We got to be careful. Amen. Who are we aiming to please? I'm not aiming. I'm not living this life. I'm not preaching these messages to please you. I'm living this life. I'm preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ to please the Lord. And I'm praying that you obey the things that I preach. But I'm doing it because I fear God. God and you better be living this life because you fear God you better be doing what you're doing for the Lord because you fear God don't do it for me as your pastor don't do it for my wife don't be doing it for all these things we talked about on this past Friday the works of the fresh amen to get praises of men see that's what's his problem his problem the people praised him so much he was now the Lord done told him to do something that he knew that the people was not going to agree with because the a man of God a woman of God you already know your people anyway amen but you got to love God more than you love anything you got to fear God amen before you fear anything I don't care about nobody voice or what they say because it's God if you really serving God he's going to tell you to do something that everybody does not agree with he's going to he's going to tell you something that people don't understand amen so you got to get right back where you're supposed to be when it comes to you and your relationship with God verse 21 but the people took the spoil, sheep and oxen, the chief of the things which should have been utterly destroyed to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God and give God. Now this is the key thing, the verses right here. And Samuel said, have the Lord, have the Lord, let me say it right here. And Samuel said, have the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord. I don't think you got that. Amen. Let me read that again. And Samuel said, have the Lord as great a delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice. God don't care nothing. When it comes to obeying God, ain't nothing you could do outside obedience to please God. Amen. This right now, those of you that are able to tune in to a broadcast like this, amen, and you able to 
understand it's time now that you're not able to enter into your sanctuary, but you can worship the Lord. You can be obedient to the man of God. You can be obedient to your woman of God. Amen. Because you can even begin to uh, want to do stuff contrary to the Lord, but you ain't physically done it yet, but in your mind. Amen. We in, we, we, we got to have church like this, but man, I wish I was in church. You better get your mind right. Amen. You better get on what God is. This is what God is leading us right now to do this. Yes, we do have to obey uh, the laws of the land, child of God. You'll find that in the book of Rome, Romans, I believe around the 13th chapter, we're supposed to obey uh, the laws of the land, those that have the rule. See, when people have it wrong, amen, the law, he's not, the law is not telling us that we can't preach the gospel. Amen. That's what we're supposed to uh, go to jail. That's what we're supposed to face persecution when it comes against our preaching the gospel or it comes against the moral, uh, uh, the morals of God or the principles of God. When people start uh, coming in between that, that's when you want to say the scripture, uh, you know, let God be true and every man a liar. That's when you want to start preaching and, and reigning stuff like this. Amen. But God wants us as the children of God. He wants us to be safe. Amen. So stay where you are. I don't care how long we got to stay in our homes right now. Let's let God do what he's allowing to be done and let's stay up under the ark of safety. We're still getting the word of God. We're still getting blessed right now. You need to learn how to pray in your own home. That's why God has allowed this to happen because we have got so traditional. We've got so religious. Amen. You, you think you ain't having church unless you in the church building. You think that it ain't no real worship service if you ain't got no music. And some of pastor, you need to even take your praise team down and let those members start praising God without a praise team because we got to get in a place where love. We are soldiers. Amen. And we are in the middle of a war. We can't have no wimps in the army of the Lord. Oh, glory to God. We can't have no spoiled people with us. Amen. People that got to have it a certain way. You got to be able to conform to whatever state that you in. Amen. If you ever been in the army or any type military situation, I believe that they have to learn how to adapt to whatever atmosphere they're in. Amen. To whatever terrain that they're in, whatever place that they are, they know how to survive. So if God got us in our houses, amen, it should mean nothing to us. Oh, glory to God. Lord, I'm going to give you the glory right now like I never gave you before. Amen. I'm going to pray in this house like I never prayed in this house before. I'm going to fast like I never fast before. Amen. Come on now. God is trying to take away the distractions. Amen. He's trying to take away the religion that we have fell in through the years. Glory to God. Because some people really forgot that we are really the church. Oh, hallelujah. The people are the church. If the church is nothing but a building if we're not in there gathering together. But you are the church. Amen. Now your house is a church. If it's two or three of you that's gathered in the name of the Lord. Beloved, you are in church. Get out of that traditional mind. Get out of that religion mindset. Oh, hallelujah. God hates it. God can't stand it. It's a stench in the nostrils of God because God is trying to raise up some soldiers that's obedient in this day and time. Oh, hey, glory to God. Because he says here again, he says, and Samuel said, after the Lord have great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifice it as in obeying the voice of the Lord. Amen. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of ram. It's, it's better to obey the Lord than to sacrifice. Why would you sacrifice yourself and try to go to church right now? Why would you sacrifice yourself? All these people out there in these other states uh, picketing and doing all this crazy stuff. You want to sacrifice your life. Amen. Why would you sacrifice yourself? Why don't you just be obedient to God. Amen. And repent because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Why don't you just be obedient to God? If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek his face and turn from your wicked ways, then I'll hear from heaven. I'll forgive your sin and I'll begin to heal your land. Amen. Why don't you just obey that scripture right now? And then the land will begin to be healed. Oh, glory to God. Then you can take yourself back to the job that you think you can't live without. Then you can go 
going back to your little sanctuary that you think you can't serve God without. But right now, God is calling for true repentance. God is calling for us to turn from our wicked ways. Amen. This is a call to repentance right now. This is the only call that God is calling for. He's calling for the children of God. He's calling for the people of God to repent right now. Yes, he's calling for the pastors, the prophets, the evangelists, and teachers. Glory to God. He's calling for us to repent. Amen. He's calling us back to his way. Oh, hallelujah. We got into the ways of the world. Oh, glory to God. We gotten away from preaching the true gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. We've gotten away from even doing the demonstrations of God. We can't demonstrate the power of God because we got too far into the world. Amen. And God is saying, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. He's saying again to touch not the unclean thing. Oh, glory to God. Y'all better hear what the Lord is saying right now. For the rebellion, verse number 23, for the rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Amen. And stubbornness is as the iniquity. And we got some obedient service out there, but we got some disobedient service out there. Amen. Your disobedience, amen. Obedience is as a sin. Disobedience is as a sin of witchcraft, rebellion, and disobedience. I know they might be cousins, amen. But if you're disobedient or you're rebellion, that still means that you're not doing what God has told you to do. Amen. He said rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft, and you stubborn people, amen. You hard-headed people, you stiff-necked people, Amen. Just refuse to catch on. Just refuse to do what God is calling us to do. Amen. Glory to God. Y'all are going to be in trouble if you don't repent because God said that's idolatry. And we found out on Friday night that idolatry is the work of the flesh. And he said those that do the things of the flesh that you will not inherit the kingdom of God. So you better get out of that idolatry. Amen. You stubborn person. Just go do it the way you want to do it. Amen. You just go do it the way you think it should be done. You think it don't take all of that. Yeah, you just keep on in your stubbornness. Amen. And God is going to judge you, beloved, because the Bible declares that judgment must first begin in the house of the Lord. And before all these revivals, yes, I believe God for revival. I'm done now, but I believe God for revival. But before we get these revivals, beloved, you're going to have to repent. Amen. We're going to have to repent. <laughs> the church going to have to repent. Revival starts in the church. We can't go out there and, and, and be effective in the world if we're not right ourselves. We have to get it right. God is calling for something. I heard, I hope God let me know. It's going to, son, it's going to be like a message. Where they're going to have to hear what the Spirit is saying because there's a lot of messages inside of this message. But I trust God enough. It's going to touch who it needs to touch. I hope you receive this word right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Go ahead now. You can close those Bibles. Let's build and go before the Lord in prayer. And we're about done in Jesus' name. I trust that I have been obedient to the Lord and done what he told me to do and said what he told me to say. But Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this word right now, God. We give you all the glory, the praise, and the honor in Jesus' name. Father, we just offer up fruit of repentance right now, Father, in Jesus' name. Is there anything in me that I haven't come up to, God? I, I, I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to take it out. We offer it up to you. We surrender our will. We surrender our way to you, Father. We want to know the times, Father. We need to know your voice, Father. Oh, God, we know we have to do our part to get into your word, Father. Get into your word. I pray you touch the heart of your people right now, Father. In the name of Jesus, those that have not caught on, God, I pray you cause them to catch on, that they would just, grab, just grow in this grace, this grace spirit that you've given us, God. And the man of God said in the word to grow in grace. Grow in grace, Father. Allow the people to grow in grace, not to sin in grace. Don't be disobedient in, in grace. Amen. Don't be disobedient to God. This is time for us to obey you, Father, and we repent right now in the name of Jesus, Father. Oh, God, just have your way. Touch even the body of Christ. Touch pastors, oh, God. Touch apostles, God, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, Father. Touch them right now as they lead their people, oh, God, in the name of Jesus. Don't let us be swayed by the people, Father. Don't be let us swayed, oh, God, by the mood of the people, Father. Oh, God, we're supposed to fear you first, God. Oh, God, you will always take care of your men, oh, God. You'll always take care of the women, oh, God, and not just the 
the men and women of God, but you will always take care of that obedient child of God. Oh God, we are here today confessing God. Oh God, we have been disobedient. We all know our ways, Father. We repent and we turn away from disobedience, God, and we make vows to be obedient to you right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that this word was just stick Oh, God, and fall on good ground to those that hear it right now. In the mighty and the master's name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we pray. We thank you right now for nothing but the victory. In Jesus' name, thank God. Amen. 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 If you're not saved, we want you to call that number right there at the bottom of your screen. Area code 904 713 3609. Area code 904. 713-3609. If you're not saved, just call us today. Amen. Whenever you review this broadcast, just call us. We'll pray the prayer of salvation with you. You can pray it right now. Just ask God to save you. Hey, I ain't have nobody repeat no prayer for me. I got saved in my apartment in 1997, not in church. Didn't have nobody to pray. Um, the, really, the thing that I got saved on, what I say, I say, Lord, I'm for real this time. Because I already knew what to do. I, I repented. I turned away from my sins. I already believed that Jesus died. He rose again. Amen. I already knew to call upon the name of the Lord. So I say, Lord, I'm for real this time. Amen. That's some of y'all testimony. You need to just say that, Lord, I'm for real this time. Repent. Turn away from your sins right now and begin to serve the Lord like you already know to serve him. He's already put it in your heart in Jesus' name. But saints of God, right now, we just want to ask that you go ahead. I'm going to go ahead right here. I'm going to just do it with you. I'm getting ready to pay my tithe and my offering. I want you to get your phones right now. Amen. Just pay our tithe and our offering. In Jesus' name, just click on uh, the Give Lefi. Amen. It should be instructions on popping up on your screen right now. But I'm going to go ahead and give mine in Jesus' name. While we're giving and while you're preparing to give, I thank God for those of you, some of you have already been giving on this morning. Amen. So we just say thank you, Jesus, for you. But Father, in Jesus' name, if we're giving right now, our tithe and our offering, oh God, we thank you that God, you said we bring our tithe and our offering into your storehouse that it may be meeting in your house to prove you now here with saith the Lord of hosts. If you not open us up the windows of heaven and pour us out a blessing, that it shall not be ruined enough to receive it. And you have rebuked the devourable for our sake, Father. We thank you, God. Through our obedience, God, we prove you through our obedience, Father. We put your word. You told us this is one and the only time you tell us to put it to the test. And we do it right now as we give right now, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, God. I pray you give seed. Continue to give seed to the sowers, Father, those that are sowing. Continue to give seed, God. We decrease seed, time, and harvest, God, over each and every one of them, Father. Cause that thing, oh, God, to come back more, Father. Come that greater. Come that greater, God. We speak increase and abundance upon your people. We thank you for how you even building up the funds, Father. Oh, God, for us getting this 15 passenger van so we can win these souls and give them a way to church for those that don't have transportation. We thank you. That's where the bulk of the funds are going right now in savings, God. We thank you that we're on radio. We thank you, oh, God, for the bills are always paid on time. Oh, God, it's because of your faithful people, the hearts that you have touched. And as you continue to touch them, continue to bless them, even those that desire to give today, but have not, Father, but bless them because of that desire, I pray right now. I have been pray for those that are unemployed, Father, those that are waiting on uh, this unemployment to kick in, Father, I pray that you will cause those things to uh, turn in their favor right now. Those that haven't got their stimulus checks, those that are just needing finances right now, God, we pray, God, that those things be loosed right now. I bind every hindrance, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Father, rebuke the devourer for their sake, God. Oh God, have mercy upon them even now because they're up under this prayer. Oh God, let their money come. Oh God, in the name of Jesus. And I trust God when they come, they'll give you what belongs to you. And we give you the glory, the praise, and the honor in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Thank God for all of you that are giving right now, praying your tithe and your offering. Like Just like I said in that prayer, we, we're doing real good with the savings up for this van that we're saving up for. In Jesus' name, we also going to be getting some things purchasing. I mean, you know what Jesus said when he comes to they find faith on the earth. I don't know the day, no, no, I when Jesus is going to return, but hey, we still going to be purchasing these chairs that so we're going to get for our outreach generators. We're going to be purchasing all these things, get prepared because we don't know the day, no, the hour, but we're going to be found in faith. But we are ready to do the work of the Lord. So we're just preparing because we do believe, amen, that God's going to have mercy upon us. So we're going to be out of our houses. We're going to be able to go back out and do, amen, what we normally did for us. Outreach is concerned. I just believe God just 
just like that because there's a great harvest that's out there that needs to be won. Continue to cry out. I know it can get discouraging sometimes, but what, 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 keep, what gets me back encouraged when I think about I was once those people I'm crying out for because rest is so get discouraged. Like these people don't want God. I ain't got time. I'm crying out and people just like to get farther and farther away from God. But you just got to remember that you were once that person that's rejecting God right now. But thank God that God did not give up on us. And amen. Just like he didn't give up on us, we cannot give up on that sinner, that unbeliever. Even the one, the fool that said in his heart, there is no God. We cannot give up on them. How Jesus was up on the cross, going through all that persecution. He loved us so much. He said, Father, forgive them. The ones that were persecuting, the ones that were mocking him, the ones that hung him up in the cross, the ones that were whipping him that the day or the night before. He said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. We got to have this love dwelling on the inside of us. Amen. So Tuesday, no, Wednesday nights, when I'm talking about Tuesday, my wife probably said, uh-uh, now you're already doing enough now. But Wednesday night, Wednesday night, Wednesday night, uh, come on, be excited and get ready for Bible study. We're still in Acts the 19th chapter. My goal is to get us to the 20th chapter on this Wednesday. It's only, then we only have eight more chapters to go, but it's a long chapter in the book of Acts, so you know how I passed it. Yes. But, we're, but we're prayerfully, we will be done with the book of Acts um, this year. And after we get out of the book of Acts, I told you I want to go into the book of Hebrews. Very good book. Uh, some of the saints want us to go in uh, uh, Revelation, but we're going to pray about that because I want to be led of the Lord. You just can't go in the book of Revelation. It's a lot of uh, study. A lot of people get a lot of things twisted up in uh, the book of Revelation. So it has to be some study and the time of the Lord. Not saying we go to the book, we preach out of the book, but just to go through a straight study, I want to be led of the Lord because y'all ain't going to lead me. I told you, I fear God first. Y'all heard the word. Now you see what happened to King Saul. Amen. So I'm going to see what the Lord says about us going into uh, Revelation. But I do know that it was in my spirit uh, for us after we have finished going through the book of Acts that we will be going through the whole book of Hebrews. Amen. That's a real good book. Faith. Well, Hall of Fame of Faith is also in the book of Hebrews. We thank God for the patriarchs that are going on, amen, to be with the Lord. Some of them died in faith, not yet received the promises, but they died in faith. And we got to stay in faith in this day and time. But we get ready to get off the air now. So bow those heads right there in your living room. Father in Jesus, and we thank you again. We give you all the glory, the praise, and the honor. Thank you for all those that have given again. But, Lord, as we prepare to sign off, sign off the air for today and prepare, if you will, and say the same for Wednesday, oh, God, and the other service that ought to come. That you will cover us. You will protect us. We bind danger seen and unseen. Oh, God, we plead the blood continually over our doorposts, oh, God. We thank you that the blood covers us even when we have to go out. Oh, God, we have to do things like go to the grocery store, go to the bank. Well, we have to do certain things. We know you protect us as long as we're in obedience, God. We're in compliance. Oh, God, uh, what you're allowing the leaders of the world uh, to tell us to do. As long as they're not telling us to do anything contrary to our faith, Father, we will obey the laws of the land. We just thank you. We give you the glory, the praise, and the honor. We ask that goodness and mercy will follow us until we meet again. In Jesus' name, thank God. Amen.